This is Generation Space, the official podcast of Air Force Space Command. In this episode, we're talking to two airmen who started building satellites back when they were cadets at the Air Force Academy. Now they're doing it as officers at the Space and Missile Systems Center. What's going on, everybody? My name is Master Sergeant Dave Salinitri, and we are here uh, talking Generation Space at lovely LA Air Force Base, home of Space and Missile Systems Center, as you can see by this giant logo here, because it's not like an Air Force production or a military production, unless there's a big logo that says exactly like where you are or what you're doing. So yay for being literal. Um, so I have two awesome guests here. Why don't you introduce yourself, sir? I'm, I'm Captain Woody Go. Uh, I serve in Remote Sensing Systems Directorate. Cool. I am First Lieutenant Cecily Agu. I'm in the Launch Enterprise Systems Directorate. Cool. And now both of you uh, are Academy grads, is that correct? That is. Correct. That's cool. So uh, I know one of the things that I'm a little curious about is like, you know, the program that you worked on, um, Falcon Sat. Why don't, you, why don't you guys talk about that and, uh, you know, that and kind of tie it to what we're doing today? Sure. So as part of my senior capstone project, I worked on Falcon Sat. So Falcon Sat is kind of like a constellation of uh, small satellites that um, you know, that the Air Force Academy has cadets work on. It's a really interesting opportunity to actually do hands-on engineering. So I know it's uh, something that perhaps you may not get the opportunity to do perhaps throughout throughout your career in the Air Force, but it's a good starting point to get basic under a basic understanding of of engineering. So I did. Um, testing and operations for subsystem level components for Falcon Set 6 and also Falcon Set 8. Okay. Uh, and I can I, go I into no a lot of details about said. that. I know. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Without, I guess, going into a lot of acronyms uh, as we like to do here in the military. But um, with Falcon Set uh, 8, at the time when we were going through all of the um, testing, we would also be in charge of all the uh, design of experiment. So that was an interesting thing to do because so while there were contractors uh, helping us and we worked alongside them, it was also cool to be able to say, hey, I did X, Y, and Z, and I was able to make something and I was able to have uh, say that I had experience doing this. So like what we would do at the end of each semester, we'd have an end of semester review and this was central to the ASHA department, and we'd have both our AFRL program managers who are um, providing the funding source for FalconSat, as well as other interest space professionals, either from Buckley Air Force Base, Shriver Air Force Base, and Peterson, and anyone else who'd be interested in hearing. Some cadets talk about what they did for their wonderful science project. But it's actually going into space. Um, talk about that. So I would say that was probably one of the biggest presentations I've I've had to give. Well, it's pretty cool, like something that you worked on as a cadet, you know, um, you know, a cadet, I, I kind of attributed that to being like a college kid. How many college kids get to work on something that then the DOD throws up in space, you know, puts up there in space? I mean, that's got to be pretty cool. And Sarah, I know you were talking to me a little bit about um, we got STP coming uh, two coming up very soon. And uh, there, there's an academy tied to that, is there not? Yeah, there is. So uh, one of the payloads that'll be on is Falcon Sat 7, which, uh, when I was there, they were first starting it. It was in the first or second year. So now, like seven years later, they're finally launching it. But uh, what it is, it's a photon sieve, and it's used to, to image the sun. So pretty much this device, this contraption shoots out of, uh, like I think it was three cube units box. And it's, it looks like parchment paper or, or aluminum foil put together. And there's the, these tiny dots in it somehow that make an image of the sun. Uh, so it's really incredible what they're doing there. Uh, the model of uh, that space capstone program, which I completed in 2013, is to learn space by doing space. And so uh, what she mentioned is we, we have a lot of touch time building these things. We have a lot of time briefing these. So then when, when we're uh, now working on satellites that are two, three billion dollars versus like the 14 million, which seemed like a lot back then, and then now you're working on a three billion dollar satellite. It, it is for real, it's for keeps this time. Yeah, and like for, so for FalconSat, the, a lot of the, the experiments that are on these small satellites are a lot of like propulsion characteristic, characterization um, technologies that either AFRL or other government agencies may be interested in. So the interesting thing is, they may show up on these larger uh, billion-dollar satellites here in the future, but they were 
they had their beginnings with uh, with cadets. So that was, uh, in my opinion, one of the best things you can do in, in, in your undergrad is to be able to have some sort of hands-on experience. And also, too, what I did um, as a senior is I was, I was also an instructor. So I was um, teaching freshmen and some sophomore level cadets uh, be, how, to, how to be um, operators. So we have a ground station, or the academy has a ground station uh, for Falcon Sat. So we were training uh, the cadets uh, to be space operators for what was Falcon Sat 3, which actually originally launched, I believe, in like 2007. Something, Something like, like that. that. And it, it, you all are it saying that like that's at least like a thousand years ago. I just want to <laughs> <Well>, say, <laughs> you know, being operational since 2007 doesn't mean you're like that old. So I'm just going to do a little disclaimer there. I mean, there. considering its mission life, I think it was like a year originally. Yeah, it's, it's, it's well it's, past its mission life. And well. I know they started using Falcasat 3. When I was there in 2013, they were using it uh, at Vandenberg in, in their initial space course. And they were trying to get it hooked up to uh, run out of, I think, West Point as well for, yeah. for their cadets. Well, that's wild. Mm -hmm. That's pretty awesome. That's pretty awesome. So I'm just connecting the dots. You went from Colorado Springs to LA. That's yeah, that's kind of cool because I went from I went to Keesler Air Force Base in Biloxi, Mississippi, and that's that not not to knock Biloxi, Mississippi, but uh, yeah, life's been pretty good, huh? <laughs> <laughs> yes. no, yeah, that's pretty cool. So, I mean, being out here in LA, where you're doing something that's not just so. Um, I mean, I feel like this is the hub for like creativity. I feel like looking around, just walking around this campus. Uh, I mean, it feels like it's a Silicon Valley of Air Force bases. I mean, it has, what's it been like being like being stationed here so far? Well, I mean, I don't want to speak for anyone else, but for me, I was at least lucky enough to have some connection to my undergraduate degree of astronautical engineering. Um, so what I do now here in uh, Launch Enterprise Systems Directorate is that I do mission assurance activities and sit on console for launches. Oh, okay. So I do That's get to cool. use some engineering and orbital mechanics based uh, information, but uh, I like it because of all the uh, interpersonal relationships and connections that you can make here. I mean, you get to know so many different people um, who are not just uh, here on base or even in El Segundo, but I mean, uh, just throughout the U.S. and even worldwide. I mean, we have a lot of um, suppliers, as you can imagine, on a launch vehicle or on a rocket, as um, other people might might say um, it's a lot of parts. You have to do a lot of hardware certification and checkouts. So being able to go out and, and see not just Yes Sun in California and the West Coast, but also go see other parts of the U.S. has been really cool. That's gonna be pretty neat. And yeah, like, yeah. And so both both of you having like a space background too with with the academy uh, to be doing acquisition, you know, for you know Air Force Space Command at SMC. I mean that's got to. I mean that's. I, I mean that the way that worked out. That's got to be pretty convenient, I'd imagine. Yeah, it's been great. I, actually, so um, the end of semester review, she talked about you brief all these colonels and, and generals. And so nowadays when we do our program reviews, I, I'm just super comfortable briefing because it's like, oh, I've already spoken to this level of audience. I know what they're expecting. The, the charts should look this way and, and whatnot. So it's it's been a pretty good transition. That's awesome. That's awesome. I feel. I feel like that's. Uh, you know, we talk about deliberate development. Sometimes I feel like that was like a really smart move on the Air Force to make sure y'all go from uh, not, not acquisition for anything, but for like you know specifically for, uh, you know, for space. What's been the coolest part about uh, working your working your career here? What that you've seen? What's been like maybe the most fun not being part of a project or. Um, best memory thing you talked about mom to mom and dad the most about <laughs> yeah i got to sit as part of a uh, launch and early on orbit test so after they launch the satellite you unpack it uh you you let it sit to like let the contaminants bake off and do all this stuff so they're doing all this stuff and we're sitting at, i'm sitting in the factory floor uh and it looks like like what you see on TV, like mission control at Houston, it looks like that, bunch of screens, bunch of people. There's like the propulsion people, the thermal people, and that they ask them each, are you go, are you go, are you go? Okay, let's deploy this contraption now. No, no you're, you're go. I'm go, that's right. <laughs> um, I work in one pond there. I have said that, <laughs> I do say that. Uh, no, but you. we're, we sit in as captains, uh, and we'll have like an like aerospace representative with us, but we sit as the, uh, the government like okay, the thumbs up for them to go ahead and continue on this real life payload in space. Uh, so that's been really cool to, to, I mean, I had a, when I was a kid, like fifth grade, I participated in space camps and stuff and that was really cool and to 
actually do it for real has been really awesome. Yeah, like I think you said, you're, you're playing for keeps now. Yeah. You know, like the thing that you grew up, you know, some kids grew up thinking like, uh, two on, two out, you know, bomb the ninth, you know, and hitting a home run. Like you, you're thinking about, no, I'll, you know, what what success looks like looks like to me what I'm dreaming about is you know working here you know in space and uh you know you're doing it I mean that's got to be pretty cool yeah that's been really rewarding what's been what's been one of your better memories man I would say the coolest thing is doing space at this point in time and being able to see the transition f uh for multiple space systems like for example um this uh, actually a few months ago um in launch enterprise uh, there's a program called the Evolve Expendable Launch Vehicle, or EELV, that uh, recently underwent a new uh, name change and also just a transition uh, for this program, and now it's called the National Security Space Launch Program. But EELV had been around for 25 years, and if I had to say, I mean, that's older than I am, so, <laughs> but it's, it's, uh, <laughs> it's cool to see um, those uh, previous launch vehicles and then what I do now to help continue that that legacy has been been really cool and then also seeing where it's going and being privy to all sorts of new developments even if I'm not necessarily working on every single other project or program that's that's in the directorate just being aware of, of, of what's going on has been pretty cool. Yeah, I think it's pretty cool too. The fact that you said you're, you know, under 25 years old, <laughs> and like I don't know where else, like, and like what other company or program, whatever there there may be out there, where you could be, you know, under 25 years old and working on not multi-million but multi-billion dollar programs. Uh, I mean, that's pretty neat. Like, I, there was a story that someone did over at uh, the ops floor at Trever, and talking about like the average age age of someone flying a satellite there, you know, multi-million billion dollar satellites uh, is like 23. Or 24 years oh. old. Hmm. I mean, that's pretty wild. Yeah, that's pretty wild. I, I know it's a lot of trust that's going on there. <laughs> it is. It is. And like you know, I, I don't remember a time where I've put on my phone and not had GPS either. You know, because like something that we did. You know, like it's you know, it's a lot of trust, but you know, it seems like it's rightfully earned too. Um, I don't know. This is something I've really enjoyed about the Air Force. Like we actually empower people. You know, with minds. You know, to do great things. Yeah. It's been cool. It's been cool. So what, what's something that um, you are looking forward to the most um, in, you know, the next year or two about being, you know, being here or uh, your duration, you know, of your assignment here? What's, what's a, something that you're really hoping to accomplish being part of SMC? Well, SMC is reorganizing. I think that's been in the news for about a year now. But 2.0. Uh, 2.0. Like next month, I think it's the official 2.0 okay. switch for all of us. Uh, the really cool part of it, that is now... I, as a remote sensing, like I said earlier, systems director, now I'm seated next to the mil satcom people. Uh, I'm seated next to the GPS people, uh, all in the production core. So we're all, our satellites are in production phase. And now I get to sit side by side and talk to what they're doing and how I can leverage those lessons learned onto my program and so forth. And so that's, we've, we've tried to do that, but like just even physically speaking, Millsatcom is across the street. So it's hard to work with someone who's not right next to you. So now with this reorganization, I'm really looking forward to, to just being able to tap the guy next to me, but saying, hey, have you seen this uh, problem on your program and how do I fix it? Yeah, what do you think that will, like, uh, what, do, what do you think that will result in? Do you think it would be like quicker, more efficient, better? What's, what's the goal there? All of that. All that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's a lot of good stuff. You know, we're doing a podcast later, and I don't know, um, you know, if that one's going to air before this or what, but it's with um, the colonel. Uh, she's about to put on 06, I believe, and she's uh, and she's heading up uh, SMC 2.0, Colonel B. I forget I forget her, her name, but um, she's awesome. And just like, so I'm pr we're pretty amped up to be able to talk to her about that because yeah, I remember the sec half talking about it a, a year or two ago. And now we're kind of, uh, it seems like it's actually happening. You know, an idea is actually happening. That's cool. That doesn't yeah. always happen. <laughs> What's something you're looking forward to here? Oh, honestly, the next launch. So the next Delta launch, Delta IV launch that we have is for GPS-1, which is actually called SV-2. Mm. Uh, so... July. That it is in July, July 25th. We're going to be out there, yeah. You know, you know, yeah. Episode four, you know, <laughs> that'll be uh, for GPS-3, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so for the next... Delta launch is actually the last Delta IV medium that will be flying in the fleet. So the first Delta launch was, I think, in around like 2005, 2006 timeframe. So it's been 
a, a big workhorse of uh, just government and also commercial assets. So I think it's really cool to, to be able to actually be around for that and also for my systems. Um, so I do, I, I'm, in, I'm a responsible engineer for uh, what are called solid rocket motors. The upper stage engine, which is called the RL10 B-2, it's a there's several variants of the RL10 produced and uh, made by Aerojet Rocketdyne, and then also the ordnance. So when you think of ordnance, it's not like city ordinances and okay. rules and stuff, but wow. actual explosives that are used to like EOD, like ordnance. Yeah, it's anything yeah. to separate multiple stages of the rocket, uh, having it actually separate from all the ground systems. So it's a pretty, not to brag, but I think it's a pretty important system. <laughs> um, but nice. uh, yeah, being able to see all the the lasting hardware be used for for this last mission. That's awesome. That's awesome. So we were actually, um, you know, just in ULA last week uh, at, at uh, in Denver talking about uh, this upcoming launch and you know, in uh, um, in the actual vehicle that's going to get us there. And they were talking about how it's you know it's uh, it's historic because it's going to be the last what medium Delta. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, there's some good stuff going on with GPS. You know, it's uh, it seems like July is like the month of launch, or, you know, or summertime, I should say. Yes. Yeah. There's uh, another one. Also, well, the next upcoming Atlas launch, Atlas V launch, age of five is, is launching in June. So yeah, it's uh, busy, busy summer. That's awesome, that's awesome. So uh, we're, get, we're right around 16 minutes in, and I'm gonna start something new, we're gonna start on this podcast. So um, at the end of every video interview I've ever done, and, and print interview uh, for the last like five or six years, I've always ended it by asking one question. So I'll, I'll ask it to you first, okay. sir, give you okay. a second, ma'am, to, to think <laughs> no about pressure. it. No pressure. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. <laughs> Where were you on the night of? No. Um, what do you live your life by? What what's what what do you march to? What's your uh, phrase, your quote, the thing that I've seen you like the most on Instagram? You know those you know are on Pinterest. What what do you, what what gets you, you know, what motivates you? I hate to quote the core values, but uh, excellence actually. Um, I want to be excellent with my use of time, my my use of resources, the use of my abilities, and so. One of the reasons I'm in the Air Force is because the Air Force's values really align with my, my core values, including excellence at the top. And so um, as long as I can, I can be excellent, which doesn't mean perfection, but just actually giving the, the honest best of my ability, time, and, and resources, uh, I'm all in. Yeah. Makes life a lot easier when, like, the organization you work for, um, you really don't have to change much to it. You know, it's just kind of natural. It's what you, you know, grew up with, it yeah. may be. And, totally. You know, and I think, uh, you know, being excellent, too, like, it doesn't even mean being, it means striving, probably, right? Striving for excellence. Yep. You don't have to, like, produce excellence. It's, but not, it's not perfection, so. How do, you, how do you incorporate that as, like, as a captain or as your daily routine? What, what, what's that, what's, like, what's that like? So, uh, I'm a family man, I have two kids, uh, so busy life plus job responsibilities. So if I'm about to take on something new, the easiest way is does this help me be more excellent with my commitments or is it actually gonna detract from all the commitments that I'm gonna do a subpar job on all of them because I'm taking this new thing on. Mm -hmm. uh, in the case where it doesn't do that, like for example, I just finished my sailing certification so I can rent boats and sail in the Pacific Ocean. <laughs> what? That helped me, <laughs> That's right? That's awesome. All right, I have a new idea for a new story, guys. What do you think? All right, I got one laughing I'll over take there. Sailing. Jacob, our audio engineer, he's excited. So, so that, for example, like helped me enjoy my family life even more. I've taken my wife and kids out on the boat. It helped me relax on the off time so I'm better at work. So that contributed to my excellence. So that was a good additional thing to take on. You know, uh, Chief Wright, uh, Chief Master of the Air Force, and uh, even our Aft Space Command Chief, Chief Toberman, they talk about resilience, being resilient all the time. They talk about, um, you know, Chief Toberman says, what ha What if at today at 4.30 you had to leave? Oh, it wasn't, you could stay to 4.31. Like, what would you do different? Would you delegate more? Would you say no to more? Would you find ways to improve? Um, and then once you left, what would you do? And he talks about, you know, he's a big fly fisherman. He goes fly fishing every single weekend. Um, but like things like that, that's what, what probably allows for you to come in Friday, Monday and be excellent is you're in a good mental place, yeah. something like that. Yep. <laughs> How about you, ma'am? You had a couple minutes to think about it now. Yes, so. <laughs> I know. I've been simmering with with, yeah. uh, with good ideas. <laughs> I would say being almost two years out of the academy, so I graduated in 2017. Um, being here at SMC for my first assignment has made me really try and break out of some of the, I would call them cadetisms a little bit. And um, what I mean by that is, what, at least for me, what I try and uh, hold 
myself to as well as encourage other junior CGOs and lieutenants uh, that don't be so hard on yourself. It's okay to make mistakes. Um, and what I mean by that is, let's say you have to give a presentation somewhere and you just utterly just bomb this presentation and then you're carrying it around with you and, and, and all that. But I think one thing, one important thing to realize is that, well, for one, it may have not seemed as bad as you think other people thought of. I mean, in a lot of instances, a lot of people are thinking about themselves. We're or always about other critics things. sometimes, Yeah, too. We're, pretty, we're pretty hard on, on ourselves. But it's good to make mistakes because how else are you going to learn something Preach. is the thing. It, it, so if you go and try and be perfect or you really try and, and be excellent all the time, sometimes you're just not going to get there. And, and I think it's important to realize that uh, – as you grow as, as a person, as an officer, that um, the mistakes that you make, I mean, it characterizes who you're going to be. And I think it's important to maybe not embody that too much and uh, cause yourself too much angst. I heard, um, I lo- yeah, I love what you just said. And there's something I heard a PA major major say not long ago and something now I, it's something I now request of my boss. And that's give me room, give me space to fail. Because if I'm going, you know, if I'm going for home runs every time, because, you know, I'm, there's probably a chance where I'm going to strike out once or twice, but you know I'll hit home runs the other time. And it's something that um, he said, absolutely, Sal. You know, run with it. And that's something I hope other like you, you know two future leaders right here. I hope it's something that you always encourage your folks, your enlisted, your young CGOs who will work for you to always have room for failure. You know, leave it because that's where I've learned. Uh, I've learned most from failure. You know, not from my success. Uh, you know, uh, the few successes. You know, like you know, it's uh, that's that's wise. Sage advice. Yeah, don't be don't be afraid. Just go out and do it. I feel like, well, I don't want to speak for other cadets and academy grads, but I definitely was uh, very afraid to to mess up. But yeah. gotta get past it. Yeah, don't don't fe- you know don't like failure. Don't fear it. But you know don't don't, don't you know you know when it happens. You know you know, don't be afraid too much from it. You know, cool. All right. Well, I hope this wasn't too bad. That's good. That's good. No, <laughs> that's good. No, that's uh, great. Thank you all for your time for being here. And, uh, you know, so, uh, yeah, yeah. Now uh, have your friends sign up for Generation Space Podcast, you know, send it to mom and dad. <laughs> <laughs> we will do. <laughs> cool. So that's it for another episode of uh, Generation Space. Uh, thanks for tuning in with us. And uh, here's here's the next time. Next time on Generation Space, our second GPS-3 launch is coming up very soon. We'll go back to the Space and Missile Systems Center to hear the origin story. Thanks for joining us, and don't forget to subscribe, comment, and share the podcast. Generation Space is a production of Air Force Space Command Public Affairs. The Generation Space theme is by First Lieutenant Tyler Whiting, our audio engineer is Jacob Mosol, and our video producer is Staff Sergeant J.T. Armstrong. For more info on Air Force Space Command, Visit our website at www.afspc.af.mil. You can also follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. Thanks for supporting the Airmen Who Aim Higher. They used to say the sky's the limit, but for us in space, there is no limit.